Dr. Reed, Dr. Reed, I am here to save the day. Oh, oh no, did the virus get you already? Are you okay? Warren, thankfully you got my message. I think the virus tried to come and visit me earlier. The lights started flickering and the screen started getting all staticky. Thankfully, I'm spending so much devoted time with God that the virus couldn't get to me. Uh, wow, Dr. Reed. That's so cool that you were able to keep the virus away. Wait, when the virus comes to attack me, he always stays around to taunt me and, and lie to me. Why doesn't he just go away like how he did for you? Well, he stole my weapon. Oh, wait, you have a weapon? Yes, well, a spiritual weapon. I can show you exactly what I mean. Let's see if we can figure out the pieces of armor that work best with these scenarios. Which armor is it? Let's see which pieces of armor we'll need. At a construction site, which piece of armor will you need the most? Is it a helmet, a sword, or a shield? You're right, it's the helmet. Okay, what about football practice? Which piece of armor do we need there? Is it the helmet, the belt, or the breastplate? It's the breastplate. Good job. Now how about in a car? What kind of armor do we need in a car? Do we need a shoe, a sword, or a belt? You're right, it is the belt. <laughs> okay, well what about if you're facing an angry, fiery dragon? Would you need the breastplate, the shield, or the shoe? <laughs> I agree. I would want the shield too. Great job, you guys. You figured them all out. You really know your armor. Here it is. The sword of the spirit. I keep it with the knives in the kitchen drawer because it's so sharp. It's safer there. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. How about you don't touch this one yet? It's very sharp and we can be very dangerous. You'll have to learn exactly how to use it before I let you hold it. Oh. Got it. Okay. How'd you get it so sharp anyway? Well, Warren, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. I don't have to do anything to make, to make it more powerful. The Word of God itself is already perfect weapon. Hmm. So... Instead of learning about another piece of armor that God meant for defending us from the virus, I can also use this to attack the virus? So cool! Yes, Warren. Now you're able to be offensive and defensive. It's pretty cool that the sword of the spirit can do both. But now especially, it's very important for you to realize that though these pieces of armor can protect you from the virus, they also are meant to show God's power. We can have all the knowledge of spiritual warfare, but without knowing God yourself, the knowledge is useless. All scripture is God-breathed and thoroughly equips us for the battle we're facing. Oh, this sounds like the most exciting piece of armor yet. I'm excited to learn more. All right, let's head to the study so I can tell you a bit more about how to use your sword wisely. Let's go. Wow, I cannot wait to hold that sword. I'm so excited. Quick, Dr. Reed, tell me everything I need to know. Haha, <laughs> please, remember this is a very serious weapon. It has the ability to defend you and offend the virus. We must take our time to learn all about it. Yeah, you're right. A huge way we can learn about the sword of the spirit is to take our time memorizing scripture verses so that we can draw upon it like a sword. A warrior always carries a sword on him so that he's able to use it whenever danger comes to call. He always prepares with scripture on his mind and ready to fight in the battle. Well, I guess it's a good thing I haven't touched that sword yet. A true warrior knows how to properly defend himself. Exactly. As a warrior, you must always be prepared and aware that you are in a battle in every moment. You must always be on defense. Remember that the virus visited me and he didn't even bother to stick around. 
That's because I know how important it is to always be on guard. You never know when the virus will come to visit you. Yeah! That's also like the time when the virus came to visit me in my sleep. I never would have expected him to come at night. That's right. You always have to be ready to not only have God's word in your mind, but also to put God's word into action. If you want to conquer the virus, you have to use the sword of the spirit to devise a plan to defeat it and actually go through the plan. You cannot just have the knowledge of the Bible. You must move forward in it. You cannot give the virus an opportunity to attack. Well, how do I do that, Dr. Reed? You have to make sure the way you are living reflects obedience, love, and faith in Jesus. Memorizing scripture means nothing if you aren't living it out. If you are truly keeping God's word in your mind, your actions will prove it true. Interesting, Dr. Reed. It sounds like the best defensive strategy I could have is knowing God's word and living a life worthy of the gospel. I'm so glad I've been memorizing all these scriptures on the armor of God these past few weeks. I think it's helping me truly understand the power of the sword of the spirit. It certainly is making you a wiser and more prepared warrior. So, does this mean I'm ready to hold the sword of the spirit? Not just yet. I think we should call a weathered warrior so we are able to learn a bit more. Okay, that sounds good. I'm Sashari, the warrior. Good to see you, Dr. Reed. It's been ages. I know, I know. I look so young. <laughs> That's because I've been in Uranus for all this time. Here it takes 81,000 days to make a year. That's 84 Earth years. Do I look 84 years old to you? Didn't think so. Anyways, I heard through the grapevines you've been learning about the armor of God. If my calculations are correct, we should probably be learning about the Sword of the Spirit right about now? Yes? I'm very happy to tell you that I'm a lover of this topic. The Bible is God's very word after all. We should love it and use it appropriately in our lives. I love where it comes from understanding that God loves us. Um, the whole book is the love story of God rescuing and redeeming His people. We are God's people. He loves all of us. If we have love for God's word, that means we have to love him and his people. If loving God and loving others is in our motivation, then we, sh then we are living our lives selfishly. We should never use God's word to as a way of fixing our problems. Our goal of being a Christ follower should be to glorify God. When we do that, all of our lives probably become less of an issue for us. We trust that God takes care of all of our needs. If any of you want to learn how to become a better swordsmanship, I have some tips for you. Study and meditate on God's word when you're by yourself and in groups with your friends. Pray every day, walk your faith journey with others, and go to church and listen when you are learning about God's word. Trust me, this will make you a master swords person. Anywho, I've got to go and be a master chef in the kitchen. I'm making filet majon <laughs> for my space of companies. Catch you on the Cosmos too. Do you think what Shashari said helped you at all? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to use all her tips. That's great. Do you feel like you're ready to hold the sword now? Maybe after I've had some quiet time with God, I want to make sure I absolutely am when I take up such an honor. Okay then, why don't you head to command them? It should be really quiet at this point of the day. Great idea! Thanks, Dr. Reed! I think I might have to stop and get some snacks though. You guys can come with me for quiet time if you want. Mmm. My favorite space snack, Moon Cheese! Ah. I'm almost done here, and then we can head to command. It's actually pretty quiet in here. Wow. 
You know, even this butter knife is pretty dangerous. I can't imagine holding something as powerful as God's word. I could definitely hurt people if I used it wrong and I don't want to do that. As much as I want to wield the sword for myself, I want to know when and how I should use it. I need wisdom and discernment to properly have such a weapon. I want to pray that every time I read and hear God's word, I know exactly how he wants me to apply it to my life. Close your eyes and pray with me if you want to learn how to properly hold the sword of the spirit. Dear Holy Spirit, I want to hear from you every time I read my Bible. Help guide me as I learn it so that I can understand the proper ways to use it. Give me wisdom and discernment to learn how to use the sword, love you more, and love others better. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Looks like we're gonna have a fight now. Are you guys ready? You have to use that sword perfectly for it to work, and you are far from perfect. I may not ever be as perfect, but God is. And God is my teacher. I won't let you discourage me when I believe the truth and the word of God. How is the word of God going to help you now? I don't see that sword of spirit anywhere. You're not ready to carry that sword on your own. Uh... Well, well, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. I don't need that physical weapon here for me to know that God's words are true. I've been spending lots of time with God and memorizing scripture. A good warrior always keeps his sword on him. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. You're learning the word and even memorizing. We're only spending time with God because you are so scared of me and what I can do to you. We're just using him to make your life easier. No! 1 John 4, 4 tells me that the one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world and all extraterrestrial planets. <laughs> Well, just wait until I start messing things up in your life. You're not going to be so trusting in your word then? Not true! It's during those messy times that I can say I have a relationship with God. And Romans 5.3 says that suffering produces perseverance. The more I trust God's word during these challenging times, the better of a warrior I become in these kinds of battles. I may not win every battle, but God wins my war! <laughs> wow! I remembered all those scripture verses. I knew that praying would help me wield my sword. The, the sword of the Spirit! How did this get here? When I prayed and read my Bible all those times, I must have been preparing to carry this. I had no idea. I had been prepared this whole time and I didn't even know it. I was just spending time with God because I love him. I gotta call Dr. Reed and tell him to meet me in command. I'm so excited for Dr. Reed to see me holding the sword of the spirit. I just called him. He should be here any minute. Warren, Warren, what's the emergency? I might have told him there was an emergency just so he could get here quicker. Might have. What's going? What? What's going on here? Is that what I think you're holding? Yes, the sword of the spirit. Don't worry, Doctor Reed. I'm prepared for it now. While I was just in battle with the virus, it sort of just appeared in my hand. All of my quiet time with God taught how and when to use it, and I was able to defeat the virus. When the virus came from my head, I used the word of God as my defense. I trusted what the Bible said about God being stronger than the virus. When the virus attacked my heart, I remember what the scripture says about God's love for me. When the virus came after my hands, 
I chose not to be rash, but instead, I wisely used scripture as an offense against it. Today, I learned firsthand just how powerful the sword of the spirit is. And I don't ever want to let this weapon be used to harm God's people. That's excellent. The, the virus would want you to mess up and use it for evil. I'm proud of you for recognizing the evil plan that the virus had. Thanks, Dr. Reed. It was really hard, but I know that when I spend time with God, He gives me strength and wisdom to overcome the virus every time. That's right, Warren. And even though you mess up, God's still strong enough to win the victory. Man, I feel like I have everything I need to fight the virus next time. Oh, what's the next piece of the armor of God? Actually, Warren, that's all it is. Wait, that's it? There's nothing else? That's it, but there's still much to learn. Follow me, I'll show you some things you still need to learn. Well, if there's no more pieces of armor, what else is there?